Hey folks. Okay, so this just arrived in the post. Always been a huge fan of the TR909. And this is Roland's latest offering, the TR09, which um, sounds like a great idea. So I'm going to put it to the test and see whether it's actually any good. Uh, the TR909, as I'm sure you're aware, is a classic drum machine used on countless tracks, both dance and pop and otherwise over the years. So nice bit of packaging here, courtesy of Roland. This is part of their new boutique range where they've reproduced a whole selection of their classic synthesizers and drum machines in this little tiny sort of compact format. So this is all very nice. Let me just pop that over to the side here. And they've courteously given us two disposable cheap batteries. Not thinking of the planet, were they? So, and also a rather large fold out, looks like, I'm not gonna open it, but there's a huge fold out uh, implementation chart with all of the different instructions on it. But if you're anything like me, I only use the instructions when things go wrong. Right. So, assuming that I'm not about to blow this unit up by incorrectly connecting it to anything, I'm going to go about plugging it in and seeing what it can do. Well, first thing that strikes me is the distinct lack of any kind of power connector. Now, I'm assuming somewhere underneath this kind of snazzy multi-level stand that there is a battery compartment and that takes four batteries. So it was nice of them to provide two, wasn't it? That was great. Um, so we're halfway there anyway. Right, well, luckily, because um, there's no cables in the box there either, luckily I do happen to have one of these USB micro B style cables. So let me just locate that and get this plugged in. So here we are, this is the cable we need. It's a kind of micro USB B sort of job. I'm gonna connect this to the USB hub over here. And with a bit of luck, it does USB power. Let's hope that it does. So I just don't have the batteries at hand. Power on. Yay, we've got some lights. So we're powered up. It's TR909. Right, so what's the next obstacle? Next obstacle is audio out. Now, these inputs and outputs, there is a mix in, there's an output, there's a phones. So we can obviously go somewhere with this. We've got MIDI in and out, and I know from having read the preamble on the website that we can also transmit the MIDI via the USB. So I'm not going to connect the MIDI cables at the moment. I'm just going to see if we can get that up and running. Um, but we are going to need a mini jack output to our sound card over here. Luckily, I have exactly the cable for that. And that would be this little hybridized cable here. So this is an RCA or cinch connector that I've stuck a couple of jack adapters on and a mini jack connector on this end. So let's get that plugged in. We're going in one and two on our sound card. Again, it doesn't matter which one it's going in as long as you remember which number it is. And let's bring this round, get it plugged into our output. It goes in rather nicely. There's also a volume setting on the back here, so I'm going to leave that somewhere in the middle range, just in case it's got an extremely loud output, which I'm not expecting, but it's possible. And that should be it. So we should be able to get MIDI in and out via that USB cable, and we should be able to get audio out via the audio cable that I've plugged in. Now, the next thing to do is just see if we can get some sounds from here. In order to do that, I'm going to immediately start running it through live and I'm going to insert an external instrument device. I'm going to see if the R909 is appearing in the MIDI tab in the Preferences pane in Ableton and just see if we can get some MIDI transmission and some audio transmission, okay? Okay, so here we are inside live. First thing I'm going to do is add an external instrument to track one. So here you can see external instrument now let's have a look. If we put the drop down menu box here and have a look at what ports are available, we can see rather conveniently that the TR09 has appeared automatically as an 
as an option in terms of MIDI in and out. So let's send some MIDI to the TR-09. Now, um, we need to know what channel this is on. Um, as I said, I'm not a huge fan of scouring through large manuals, although it probably wouldn't take me long to find it on there. Um, I kind of know from having used a lot of Roland drum machines that they generally set them to MIDI channel 10. So I'm going to start on 10, and if we don't get a result, I'm going to have to look in the manual. So I'm going to start on channel 10, see if we get some results from there. And then I'm going to uh, recall the audio. So the audio needs to come back in from somewhere. And I've plugged this little puppy into inputs one and two on the sound card. So in theory, if we're getting sound out of this, it should be coming in there and it should show up here in live. So let's just test that out. First of all, I'm going to hit some buttons on here, see if we can get some sound. I'm actually going to start the internal sequencer. Well, there you go. That was nice and simple. So we're getting our sounds, which is fantastic. The other thing we need to know now is, are we transmitting MIDI on the correct channel? The way to test that is to either send some MIDI information from one of the clips in live here, or I could use the push and just, well, there we are. Straight off the bat, we're transmitting MIDI and we've got the right channel. So that was good. So now we've got this instrument working, brilliant. Let's have a little play around with the sounds and see what, can, what we can get out of it. Now, I'm going, to, um, I'm going to just use the internal sequencer on the TR-09 for now. I'm just going to press start and just have a little play around with these knobs. We've got um, a lot of stuff that will be familiar from the previous session on um, using the drummers on because a lot of this is very closely based on the original TR-909 and the drummers on equally is based very closely on that model. So let's just see what we can do. Okay, well, just a first impression there. I mean, I've got access to all the kind of basic controls that I would expect. I've got things like level for each sound. I've got the tune or the pitch for each sound. I've got some of them have some extra parameters such as attack and decay. Um, uh, the snappy function is there or the snappy parameter for the snare. Um, I'm noticing that the clap doesn't have the reverb that the original TR909 or at least the drummers on version does. And also that the hi-hats are grouped so the, there isn't an independent level setting for the closed hat and the open hat. Now I'm not actually not having ever owned an original TR909. Uh, I'm not sure if that's exactly how it's implemented on the 909 or whether this is an ad adaptation for this particular model. Um, but one of the things that strikes me immediately is that these knobs are not only are they quite small but they're also very hard, which makes them a little bit difficult to get purchase on. And I mean, this is a studio environment. I can imagine that if I tried to use this in a live setting and I was in any way excited about stuff, that I would have uh, quite a lot of trouble manipulating these knobs, um, which is a little bit of a problem, but it's not uh, something that we can't overcome. So with that in mind, let's just see if I can program a little beat in live here to send to the 909 and then let's have a look at adding a MIDI controller in very much the same way that we have done in the previous lessons to augment the capabilities or at least make it a little bit easier to control these sort of essential parameters in a live environment where things tend to get a bit more sweaty and tiny knobs with very hard coating on become a little bit 
unuser friendly. So let's just set up a little MIDI pattern, get this going, and then um, and go from there. <laughs> 